So imagine this, you've got the Coastal Guard, right? They're all on edge because there's this boat out there just cruising along for hours. No sign of anyone steering it. They finally decide to investigate, hop aboard, and what do they find? Not a soul, just an envelope. Then out of nowhere, boom, a tremor hits. The boat does a 180 and kaboom. The tunnel cracks open. Water starts pouring in and chaos ensues for the cars. Meanwhile, the government's all like, what the heck is going on? They're scratching their heads trying to figure it out. They even consider a volcano erupting in the sea, but nope, still a mystery. So they're like, we better play it safe and order everyone to evacuate pronto. Wild, huh? So while all this chaos is going down, you've got some civilians who just aren't taking it seriously. They're out there filming and treating it like some kind of joke, not realizing the serious trouble they're in. But then, a researcher drops a bombshell. It could be a nuclear submarine or some kind of underwater eruption. And hey, they even see smoke coming from the sea on the screen. But they're all chill because it's not toxic. Then there's this genius who's like, guys, what if it's a monster? But everyone's like, nah, impossible. I mean, it's hundreds of degrees down there, right? But guess what? They're dead wrong because just minutes later, bam, a massive monster tail pops up out of nowhere. Talk about a wake-up call. So picture this, the tail pops up and everyone's jaws hit the floor because they can't even fathom how big this creature must be. They're like, okay, we need the best biologist on the case. But before they can even figure out what this thing is, it starts wrecking boats left and right and things are getting real bad, real fast. So they're like, all right, let's bring in Hirami. She'll know what to do. She takes one look at the video and drops a bombshell. This thing can crawl on land. But, surprise, surprise, no one takes her seriously. Then, just when everyone's trying to calm down, the Prime Minister steps up to reassure everyone that it's all under control. But before he can even finish his speech, an officer barges in with the worst news imaginable. These creatures are tearing through Tokyo, and it's chaos out there, man. Talk about a disaster. Okay, so the Prime Minister's in a bit of a pickle because he's realized he messed up big time with the info, and now his rep's on the line. But putting that drama aside, he's like, all right, emergency meeting time. We gotta deal with this monster ASAP. Meanwhile, in the city, it's chaos. People are running for their lives. But little do they know the real danger's creeping up behind them. Godzilla! This massive creature is crawling around and it's leaking some nasty fluid from its neck. Gross. Back at the meeting, they're all freaking out because they know Godzilla could wipe the city off the map in no time. So they're like, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. The police are on it trying to get everyone out of harm's way, but it's pandemonium out there. People are fleeing for safety and you can feel the panic in the air. So while Godzilla's out there wreaking havoc, crushing buildings like they're made of paper, the big shots are like, okay, we need backup. They're calling in the self-defense force and even reaching out to the US for help. But before they can do that, they're like, all right, let's see what we've got in our own arsenal. It's a big deal because since World War II, they haven't had to bust out the big guns in Tokyo. But hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. So they're gathering up their military forces, having meetings left and right. But here's the kicker. They still don't know what they're up against. Talk about being in the dark. They gotta be ready for anything because this creature means business. All right? So they're gearing up to take down Godzilla, right? They've got these army choppers all set to unleash fire on the beast. They pick out their best officers for the job and they're ready to rumble. But here's the thing. Godzilla's just chilling on the ground, not making a move. Little do they know he's just biding his time, plotting his next move. Suddenly, he springs up, letting out this ear-splitting roar, and the officers are like, uh, that's not what we signed up for. They thought they were dealing with one type of creature, but this thing's a whole different story. Still, they're not backing down. The Prime Minister's like, all right, go get them, boys. But there's a problem. Civilians are still in the area, so they can't just start firing away. Talk about a sticky situation. So the Prime Minister's like, hold up, we can't risk innocent lives here and calls off the attack on Godzilla. But that sneaky creature takes advantage of the situation and starts plowing through everything in its path, leaving destruction in its wake. And just like that, after causing chaos and carnage, Godzilla vanishes into the water, 
leaving no trace behind. Later on, Yaguchi and a bunch of officials survey the wreckage, trying to figure out how to rebuild the city. Meanwhile, Yaguchi's not taking any chances. He's gearing up for round two in case Godzilla decides to make a comeback from the depths. Talk about staying one step ahead of the game. So Yaguchi's got his team together, right? They're brainstorming like crazy trying to crack the Godzilla mystery. And then, out of the blue, Hiromi drops this bombshell. She thinks Godzilla's sucking up nuclear fusion to keep himself going strong. But of course, there's always that one guy who's got to be a wise guy and make fun of her. Classic. But lo and behold, he soon realizes he's dead wrong, because it turns out Godzilla's actually hitting up areas rich in nuclear energy. Oops. As they dig deeper, they realize Godzilla's chomping down on energy like it's his favorite snack. Yaguchi's like, uh-oh, we better take this seriously, and fills in the officials. He's not totally sold on the whole radioactive idea, but hey, better safe than sorry, right? They start holding press conferences, warning folks to steer clear of those hot spots. Smart move, Yaguchi, smart move. So while Yaguchi's knee-deep in trying to figure out Godzilla's deal, he gets a visit from Kayoko Ann Patterson, a Japanese-American with a proposition. She's like, hey, help me find this guy Goromaki, and I'll spill the beans on Godzilla. Oh, and by the way, she drops the bomb that the creature's name is Godzilla. Talk about a revelation. So Yaguchi starts digging into this Goromaki dude who's been kicked out of Japan but ends up working for the American Department of Energy. Turns out that boat from the first scene, it belongs to him and he's nowhere to be found after all the chaos. Yaguchi fills Kayoko in on the scoop and she delivers on her promise, handing over Goromaki's files. As they sift through him, they realize this guy's been studying nuclear waste in the Pacific Ocean and Godzilla's probably been munching on that energy buffet to survive. Talk about connecting the dots. So just when they think they've got a handle on things, Godzilla decides to make a beeline for Tokyo. But the specialists aren't giving up hope just yet. They come up with a plan to freeze him solid by injecting blood coagulant. Yaguchi's so wrapped up in his work, he hasn't even had time to shower. But just when he's about to finally hit the shower, BAM! His assistant drops the bomb that Godzilla's back in action, this time in Sagami Bay. The government's not messing around. They're ordering an immediate evacuation of Kamakura. Talk about a roller coaster of a day. So while Godzilla's causing chaos left and right, people are scrambling to get away from him, fearing for their lives. Meanwhile, the bigwigs are huddled up in a meeting, watching the action unfold on the monitor. But, oh, they notice something alarming. Godzilla's gotten even bigger since the last attack. Talk about a scary sight. But hey, they're not backing down. They're rallying the self-defense forces who've already tangled with this beast before to help take him down. They're strategizing with the high command, coming up with a plan of attack. But here's the kicker. They know they can't just go blasting away at Godzilla's body because he'll just release a ton of energy. So they've got their sights set on his face and legs. And with that, they're locked and loaded, ready to take their shot at Godzilla. It's all or nothing now, so they're blasting away at Godzilla with everything they've got. But he's like a freaking wall, just shrugging off the fire like it's nothing. They're like, all right, let's try missiles this time. And they get the green light from the prime minister. And finally, they manage to land a hit on Godzilla with a missile. The whole city's shaking from the explosions, but Godzilla's not backing down. He's on a rampage, tearing through buildings, and even taking out the tankers. It's chaos out there, and he's heading straight for the districts where people are still stranded. Talk about a nightmare come to life. So the prime minister's like, enough is enough. We're calling off the mission. But of course, some folks are like, nah, we can totally take down Godzilla. But the PM's not having it. He's putting people's lives first. They've come to terms with the harsh truth. Godzilla's just too powerful to beat. So they swallow their pride and reach out to the U.S. for help. Meanwhile, Yaguchi and his crew are trying to convince the PM to skedaddle because it's getting dangerous. But the PM's like, I can't abandon my people. Yaguchi hits him with some hard truth, though. If he goes down, who's going to lead the charge to save Japan? Reluctantly, the PM agrees, realizing his own life is worth fighting for. So while the evacuation orders are being handed out, Yaguchi's stuck in traffic watching in horror as Godzilla looms large in the distance. The American aircraft swoop in, raining bombs down on Godzilla, 
but even a lethal missile can't keep him down. Instead, he's seething with anger, his body glowing ominously. And then out of nowhere, he unleashes a fiery blast from his mouth, turning the city to ashes in an instant. But it doesn't stop there. When the American aircraft keep coming at him with missiles, Godzilla retaliates with a devastating beam from his mouth, taking down the planes and even burning up the Prime Minister's plans. It's a nightmare come true, and Godzilla's just getting started. So Kyoko's in the car, watching in horror as Godzilla flexes his godlike power, obliterating everything in his path with that deadly beam of his. It's like the whole city's crumbling at his feet, and he's just strutting around like he owns the place. The next morning, Yaguchi's seething with rage as he surveys the devastation firsthand. And to top it off, they've got a new prime minister because the old one didn't make it. Yaguchi's not giving up, though. He rallies his team, urging them to fight back with everything they've got, to honor the memory of those they've lost. It's time to take the fight to Godzilla and show him who's boss. So Kyoko wastes no time and gets Yaguchi to arrange a meeting with the prime minister. She lays it all out. Tons of countries are offering to lend a hand in dealing with Godzilla, but the PM's secretary shuts it down, saying Japan's got it under control. However, when Kyoko offers up American scientists to help study Godzilla, the PM's like, all right, I'll bite. So they gather up a mix of American and Japanese brain power and send a drone to check out Godzilla. But surprise, surprise, the drone's useless thanks to all the radioactive energy swirling around Godzilla. So they gotta send in some brave souls to do the job, and they manage to snag some Godzilla DNA before retreating. It's a risky move, but hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. So when they analyze Godzilla's DNA, they uncover a shocking truth. He can reproduce by spewing out his fluid. This sends shockwaves through the international community, cause now everyone's freaking out about this monster potentially spreading beyond Japan's borders. Meanwhile, Kyoko fills in Yaguchi on the other country's concerns and their offers to help. On top of that, U.S. officials are pressuring Japan's prime minister to nuke the city as a last resort. They even promise to rebuild the city once Godzilla's gone for good. But the prime minister's caught between a rock and a hard place. He knows Japan's the biggest threat here. Even his secretary's urging Yaguchi to see reason because they don't want to see Japan suffer even more devastation. Tough decisions ahead for everyone involved. So Yaguchi's not about to let nuclear weapons be the answer to the Godzilla problem. Instead, he's rallying his team to work on a plan involving freezing Godzilla with coagulants. They're scrambling to gather as much of this stuff as they can. Meanwhile, other countries are giving Japan a two-week ultimatum, evacuate or face the nukes. So they're hustling to get civilians to safety, using planes and boats to get them out of harm's way. In the midst of all this chaos, an intelligence officer crosses paths with Maki, a guy who abandoned his wife in the name of research. They swap some top secret documents to help their country out. So Yaguchi's hit a roadblock because they can't crack Maki's crazy molecular graph. It's like a puzzle they just can't solve. But then a breakthrough. Turns out they can still freeze Godzilla to death. They just need the green light from the prime minister, who's all for it because he's not keen on nuking the city either. Meanwhile, Yaguchi's sweating bullets because the coagulant they need is taking forever to arrive. But he's not one to sit around twiddling his thumbs. He pulls out all the stops to make sure it gets here in time. It's a race against the clock, but with their determination, they just might pull it off. So the big day's finally here, and Yaguchi's rallying the troops with some inspirational speeches. They're gearing up for the ultimate showdown with Godzilla, ready to risk it all in this life-or-death game. With the plane prepped and ready, they unleash two bullet trains to knock Godzilla off his feet. But when they start bombarding him, he fights back with fire and those deadly beams of his. It's chaos, but they're sticking to the plan. And just when they think Godzilla's radioactive powers tapped out, they bring down the buildings around him, trapping him underneath. They waste no time sending in a crane to inject coagulant into his mouth. But of course, Godzilla's not going down without a fight. He wakes up and starts thrashing around. They manage to knock him down again with the trains and hit him with another dose of coagulant, and this time it works like a charm. Godzilla's frozen solid, like a statue. Everyone's over the moon because they've pulled off the impossible, and the Prime Minister's even calling up the UN to cancel those nuclear weapon orders. 
It's a victory for Japan, and with Godzilla out of the picture, people can finally start rebuilding their lives. And as for Godzilla, well, without any energy to absorb, he's fading fast. It's the end of an era.